About a year ago, I did a series on this channel where the whole premise of it was how good could I make a colonist without giving them bionics. Now I'm talking giving them different types of food, different types of consumables, different types of drugs, literally anything you can think of that wasn't bionics. Now when I look at today's mod and I look back at that series, Jesus, I wish we had this mod at the time of recording for that series. Introducing the Maru Demon Root mod. When I first saw this mod on the Steam Workshop page, I kind of looked at the description of it and thought, oh, this could be interesting to check out. And the more I looked into things and the way I saw this work in game, I was genuinely so impressed at how this all turned out and I couldn't understand why it's so unappreciated on the Steam Workshop page. So let's get into things and start with the content. So let's start by looking at the content of the Steam Workshop page. What is there and what do we see? So we start off with the thumbnail here, really eye-catching, I really do appreciate this. Then getting into the bulk of things, there's not much here. We have some words and phrases and that is about it. However, when you do read what has been provided here, it shows you that this is a very unique item that's been added and something we haven't necessarily seen before. And I think the mod creator could really play off that for the Steam Workshop page here. Show some pictures of what the stat bonuses are, show some pictures of what actually is added by this mod and go into a little bit more detail about the, maybe the lore behind it, things like that. I think the advertisement in the Steam Workshop page here is really lacking and we could definitely see an improvement. So what does the content look like in game? This mod has three brand new items here. We have a brand new demon root plant, the demon root that's been harvested from said plant, and then we have the star of the show, the demon root pill. Only these three items and the demon root pill is created at the drug lab. So seeing as there's only three items added by this mod, let's go through each individual item and go through what they actually do. So let's start with the demon root plant. Now the demon root plant is extremely unique. It's unique in the fact that it can only be grown in darkness and you have to have a minimum skill requirement of 10. Now there's a lot more to this plant than meets the eye though. When we look at the actual stats of it, there's a few key features here that I think really stand out here. Firstly, it takes 35 days for you to grow this plant to maturity. That's crazy long, like that's incredibly long, especially when you think that you can do so many things in 35 in-game days. Next, what's really interesting is that when we do actually come to harvest one of these plants, we only get given one in return. That is it. We're only given one singular demon root back after all this time nurturing it and caring for it. That is all. So we're going to have a very large space in order to grow this, and then we're not going to actually get very much back. Now, despite how much time and effort we're going to put into this, it's only worth a few silver. It's not even worth your time, particularly, unless you're going after the one drug that we're after here. So after those 35 days, we've harvested our one demon root, what do we do next? Well, we have the demon root as an actual item that we can now consume. The demon root itself doesn't really do much. Well, the most interesting fact about this is not just the huge negative in beauty for when it's out and about, it's also that according to the description, when it's consumed, it will immediately kill you. Now, me being an inquisitive young lad, I wanted to test this out. So I grabbed my colonists called Crimson here and got them to chow down on this tasty root. And funnily enough, uh, they're, they're dead. <laughs> very quickly in fact. And when I look into the actual health tab here and look at what the damage is and see if there's any extra health things going on here, look at the pain. Holy moly, that's a big number. So let's hypothesize that I didn't accidentally make my colonist eat demon root and immediately die to pain, right? Let's look at the actual pill after it's been made and it's been processed from the demon root and look at the individual bonuses and stats that we can actually gain from it. So looking at it as a drug, this is theoretically classed as a medical drug. Very interesting because it doesn't really provide much medical bonuses here. It also has a high gain per dosage of 100%. So once you immediately take one of these, you will be high as a kite almost immediately. The high fall rate is 300% per day. Now this is very important and we need to keep that in mind for the rest of this review because it's very, very important. And the safe dose interval is never safe. Once you take this drug, there is no going back. Then moving on to the effects of what this drug does, which is the main star of the show here. We have a melee damage factor of plus 500%, a blood filtration plus factor of 270%, blood pumping plus 1000%, Consciousness plus 210%, Digestion plus 220%, Moving plus 205%, and Sight plus 215%, and Pain is reduced to 0%. The buffs here are... I've, ne I've never seen buffs this high before. This is so absurdly large. How can this be balanced? How can this fit in? How could I even remotely think about adding this to my playthrough? Well, we'll get into this. Once we have our colonists take it here, they immediately go berserk. There is no stopping them. As long as you take this drug, your colonists will go to berserk and they will just kill everything. There is no stopping them. They will be berserk until the drug wears out and once the drug wears out, they're dead. There 
is no turning back once you've taken this pill. It's like Luciferium, but even better or worse. Depends what you think. So how do we access this amazing drug? Well, basically all we have to do is make it at a drug lab. And then how are we gonna get that in terms of research? The only research here is going to be drug production to get the drug lab. And then we have to then research the actual demon root as well in order to grow it and then turn it into the drug itself. Very fair, very balanced, makes perfect sense. Good. So that's going to be it for the content section here. And I think what we've got here is a very special mod. What's been provided here is such a unique concept and totally plays on us as the players. So many bionics mods and drugs mods out there just kind of buff our colonists. There's not really much downside here. They're kind of balanced. They're kind of overpowered. And we kind of shrug our shoulders and think, well, we've still got our colonists. This mod does something that we've not really seen before and just removes our colonists. Like we give them this drug. Yes, they will be absolute monsters but we'll lose them. They'll be gone. They'll be dead. Like there is so much risk reward here for the players that's provided by just one item. It's super unique. And I'm full credits to the mod creator for thinking of this. The only way that I can see this being better is maybe just have some different variations of this drug. Maybe have different strengths, different quantities. Maybe have an even higher strength dose of this drug that we can refine even further, but last like 30 seconds or something like that. Or maybe we have like a Psychite T equivalent and then make it like super, super addictive. And we have to farm loads and loads of this demon root. And then it just totally takes over your economy and your colony as well. I think what content we've got here is super good, like stupidly good. In fact, I'm super impressed with this, but we need a little bit more here to have a more comprehensive experience and just to really deepen what we've already got. So for content here, super impressed with what we've got. Super, super impressed. Like I can't get that across enough. But we need more. We need, I want more. We need more. We deserve more of something that's super unique in this way. So I'm going to be giving the content here a 7 out of 10. So next, let's move on and look at the quality of the items added by this mod. Now, for a mod that's only adding three items, I have very high expectations here. I'm expecting a lot of love and care to be put in here. I'm expecting this to fit in very well with vanilla real mods, just being slightly better so I know it's modded. Zooming in and things are looking a bit fuzzy. Things are looking a little bit... Hmm, I'm qu questioning the quality here. When I was recording this, I kind of thought, oh, there's no way that this is going to be worse than vanilla, right? I think that's kind of the standard, right? So what I did was I spawned in some vanilla equivalents, wake up and rice to kind of compare the two. And to my surprise, the vanilla textures were actually better than that's what's been added by this mod. I don't know if maybe the designer here has potentially done this in the wrong format here, and maybe there's something that's gone wrong there, but these don't look very good. I'm not very impressed with them. And I think for something that does so much and is so unique, this could be such a great opportunity to have something really unique and really interesting here that just shows off what this mod can do. I'm let down by the quality of what we're seeing here, and I really want to see more here. But it's not all doom and gloom. What I really like to look at is all the individual items to see if there's vivid descriptions and something unique in every single one of them. I was very glad to see that all the items that have been added by this mod have got individual descriptions and they've got they explain how things work, which is always really, really nice. So for quality here, as you can tell, it's not the best. It really just lacks in terms of what I'm looking at. And for it to be worse than vanilla, oh, it hurts because of how much I like this mod and I love the concepts behind it. It just doesn't feel like we've had enough care and attention put into the way things look, which I think is very, very important. So for quality here, they're, then they're all right designs, but the quality is, oh, I'm going to be giving this a 4 out of 10 here. So next, let's move on and look at the balancing of the item that's been added by this mod. Now, you're probably thinking, how on earth could an item that literally allows colonists to go on killing sprees and one-hit kill people be balanced? Well, I was thinking the same, honestly. So what I wanted to do was do things in a certain order. What I wanted to look at first before looking at how powerful things were, is I wanted to look at how easy it was to access everything. I want to look at how much time we're going to be spending and investing into getting access to this drug before looking at the combat potential. So the first thing we're going to look at is the beginning of the process here and is looking at how easy it is to access Demon Root and how long it's going to take to get it and what I think of the balancing going from there. Now, I personally, before we even get into this, the Demon Root is perfectly balanced. The Demon Root, in terms of the amount of time it takes, which is 35 days to access the end product. And once we harvest the end product, we only get one. So there is an extremely good ratio where in terms of each plant, we get one in return, a one-to-one -one ratio. Very, very nice. 35 days as well means that we go through 
blight, we could go through various temperatures, we could go through all the motions to get this. And the most of the time, we're actually gonna probably have to have hydroponics to grow this because of all the varying factors in the rim world economy and the rim world world itself. And on top of that, it has a minimum skill requirement of 10 to grow. Therefore, we have to have a good solid colony to back this up, to plant things around it. We've got to actually invest time into training our planters to make sure that they can maintain this, grow it, and look after it at every single stage. The time investment of the player here to balance out what we're gonna be getting as an end product is huge. So the first stage of the process is extremely balanced. It makes perfect sense. Let's move on to the second process, the actual making of said pill. Now the recipe for making the demon pill is 11 demon root, five gold and five nutriamine. So 11 demon root will require you to have 11 tiles of your gardens and your planting areas to just grow demon root. Once again, balanced. The five gold I think is a nice touch here. I don't think it's too much. I don't think it's too little. It kind of seems a bit weird to have this as a crafting item, but I guess it makes sense as well. And then the five Nutra Amy. Now, obviously in base game Villa Rimworld, we cannot craft Nutra Amy. We have to go out and trade for it and do all those good things, which is kind of a balance point as well. But I still think this is a little bit on the cheap side, personally. I don't know why we've got this sort of industrial pill that we're taking. It doesn't really require anything that's kind of drug based. You could arguably say that this should have a prerequisite of wake up, go juice, luciferium, add some extra drugs into mix. This is surely the ultimate drug that we're taking, right? And we're never gonna take this again. Why not make this be a mixture of all the different drugs? Add a little bit more of a time in order to process this so you know what you're getting into and you're really gonna commit yourself. It then just means that you can focus on possess component economy around this, trading more. I just think, it's a bit too easy to craft, you know? And it goes back to me saying earlier that I could honestly see this being either way too easy to access, so you're just giving it to people accidentally, or make this a little bit harder and make this maybe a little bit more of a buffed item. Who knows here? I'm a little bit on the fence on this one. So the first process balanced the second process, kind of balanced depending on how we look at things, and then the tech cost. Now the tech cost for me is kind of a bit weird. Now I do get why we have to have a drug lab as a prerequisite, I do appreciate having its own individual tech tree. But for the first time ever, I'm kind of thinking this is a bit too much. This feels like a very tribal thing to access. This drug that you give, it comes from root form and we give it to our people to go berserk and they have one final send off. It feels very tribal and ritualistic and I don't necessarily think that it should be a industrial drug. I can potentially see the argument of having it locked behind all the other drugs that we have to research as a prerequisite then having that as part of the recipe to make. I think that would be a really good idea if you wanted to make things feel a bit more industrial but if we want things to feel a bit more tribal, a bit more raw, a bit more savage Maybe just have this as its own research as being accessed through tribal stuff. Same as with Devil Strand, just have it as one of the very first researches you access and you can just make it. So I think in terms of research, it could go either way. And at the moment, I can't tell if this is a tribal drug or an industrial drug. It feels tribal, but looks industrial. I think the mod creation just needs to pick a direction and really invest themselves into it to balance it in terms of research. So far, balancing seems really good. A couple of hiccups here and there, depending on what your opinion is, but so far, really, really good. So let's get into the actual drug itself and let's give it to a colonist here. Here I have a colonist that I've locked inside a few layers of uranium wall, and we're, what we're going to do is test how long it lasts when we have a colonist take it. How long are they going to be in a berserk mode going absolutely wild? and how long are they going to be a risk to our colony. So I'm probably going to put a timer, timer somewhere on the screen and f speed things up and we're going to look at how long it lasts. So as you can see, this drug lasts roughly six minutes. Now for a drug that's designed to just kill you pretty much immediately after use, six minutes seems like a long time. Six minutes is enough time for this colonist to go berserk, kill all of your raiders, and then turn around and kill your colonists as well. Six minutes is a very long time when you think at how quickly raids are over and how much time that this berserk colonist could spend ripping apart your entire map. I think this needs to be at least halved, if not more. I feel like this drug is definitely a last resort thing that we're giving it to a colonist that's nearly on the edge of death here. We give it them, they give it that boost and then they go off and they just go wild. Six minutes, very, very long. So six minutes is a very long time, especially when you take into the fact that within six minutes, I could go to my kitchen, I could make myself a coffee, I could come back, sit at my desk, think about your mother for a few minutes and keep 
going. So what I decided to do here was create ourselves a little Colosseum here. Six minutes is a very long time here. So within six minutes, I'm expecting here for our colonist in the middle here to wipe out the enemies and then go after the colonist and kind of prove my point that maybe this should be a little bit shorter so it kills the enemies and that is it. So the test that I'm going to be doing first is one colonist here with full flak armor and we're going to put them against a few cataphracts and just kind of see how they do. So the colonist in the middle kills the first cataphract and then gets immediately lasered down. There was no chance in them really, and let's be fair, I didn't give them a weapon, I didn't give them equal armour. This is a bit of a weird test. So what I thought instead was we'll try this again but make things a little bit more reasonable for our colonist on drugs. So round number two, colonist has once again not got a weapon, takes the drug and they have been put against eight tribal warriors. The assumption here is that because they've not got any armor and they are just melee fighters as well, our person in the middle should do a lot better. And you know what? I'm right. Our colonist does a hell of a lot better here, killing four of them, taking the head off one of them before going down and then causing the tribals to then want to run away. This time things have gone a lot better, but I mean eight tribals in a combat situation is so unrealistic it's just like never gonna happen we've got to take into account that most of the time we'll have friendlies we'll have turrets there'll be cover and armor there's so many things to take into account here i didn't feel this test was necessarily accurate so i wanted to recreate it again and then make it feel even more realistic by making things a bit easier for our colonist. So for the last test, I've set up our colonists with full flak armor and given them a steel longsword as well. The first time I'm giving them a weapon. Instead of making them fight five or eight or however many tribals, instead I've made them against three. I felt like three was a most reasonable for most combat situations that they would be put in. And funnily enough, they do extremely well, wiping the floor with the three tribals and going straight after the colonists, one hit killing them and just going to town. And like I said, I think this is arguably the most realistic situation where this would work in. Now for balancing, this is extremely powerful, like it is insane. But as you can see, because they go berserk, they go after everybody. Nobody's excluded from this. Not colonists, not animals, not babies, not children. This is like Anakin Skywalker with Tusken Raiders. This, this is that, but in RimWorld, which is awful to think, honestly. The balancing here, despite this drug being extremely powerful and giving amazing combat bonuses here, is fairly balanced, really. The only issue I've got here is the amount of time it lasts. Because this colonist will be running around trying to kill everybody for six minutes. Six minutes is the main balancing issue for me here. So that's going to be it for the balancing section. And you're probably as surprised as I am at how well balanced this actually is. Now, don't get me wrong. The combat bonuses are insane. They're ridiculous. One hit killing so many things is a crazy stat when you think about it. But when you also take into the fact that because of the berserk psychotic break, they will also be going after your own colonist and your own pawns. This is crazy because they could be at the other side of the map and they will hunt you down. They will not spare anyone. They will just go for it, which is an amazing balancing point. And then they just die. Like, they've got no regrets whatsoever. Now, I could arguably say that this lasts too long. And I do genuinely think that. I can see this potentially being halved to three minutes. Now, yes, it would make this a little bit more powerful, but six minutes is then causing a detrimental effect to my game as well, because I'll end up losing colonists. Like it's just guaranteed in the early raids. If I get one of these drugs and I give it to just some random slave, I will lose colonists at the same time. So for balancing here, I'm surprisingly very, very impressed at the balancing here. The only thing that I can see being changed is just maybe reduce the amount of time they're alive once taking it. So I'm going to be giving the balancing here a very strong 9 out of 10. So next let's move on and look at the compatibility of this mod. Are there any bugs I need to let you know about and how this fit into your playthroughs? Now in terms of bugs, I personally had no issues whatsoever in any of my testing. Everything worked perfectly. Looking at the Steam Workshop page and at the time of recording there are three comments and that is it. Nobody's really given any feedback. Looking back at things though, I can definitely see that if you were running through a Sanguifage playthrough and you gave these to Sanguifages, you could potentially see the fact that they could then just revive themselves and have absolutely no repercussions, being a little bit on the more overpowered side and a little bit weird. I could see potential for adding a maybe death acidifier effect at the end when you do die as a result of taking this drug. I think that would, could be a balancing factor. You're like, you, yes, you're a Sangophage, you come back, but you've also lost all of your armor. So you're more likely could go down and die sooner. That could be something that's considered, but otherwise no issues. Now in terms of playthroughs, this is one of those very rare mods that fits in with actually every era, tribal, medieval, 
industrial, just plain rain mod. This fit mod fits in really well, no matter what your playthrough is. Now, I personally think that this won't really fit in with a more passive, more story-based playthrough. This would really benefit in being more of a combative playthrough that's focused around raiding and defending yourself and things like that. And I think the fact that this does obviously ultimately kill one of your colonists is a limiting factor to some players that are maybe a bit more protective of what little pawns they've got, depending on what their playthrough is. So for compatibility here, it's surprisingly, once again, very good and very successful in what it does. For something, because it is such a small mod that fits in with every era of no bugs, it does very, very well here. So for compatibility, I'm going to be scoring it an 8 out of 10. So next to my mod recommendations. Now, because this is kind of an add-on mod where you can fit in with any mod pack, I was kind of left thinking, well, what mod packs can I recommend to you guys? Because there's not really one that you can build around this mod, which is a downside of this mod. It's just too small to focus a playthrough on. So starting off with Vanilla Weapons Expanded Non-Lethal. You can capture loads of pawns, enslave them, give them this drug in the middle of a raid and watch them go wild and then put them down quickly. Next, we've got Simple Slavery Collars plus Tweaks. So then we can make our slaves and just treat them better so they don't run away when we're forcing them to go off into battle. Next, we've got Wallaloo's Better Conversion and Recruitment to get even more recruitments and even more slaves just so we can force them to go off and take loads of drugs and then die. Next, we've got Scar's Basic Farming so we can try grow the demon root just a bit quicker. And then lastly, we have a Vanilla Armor Expanded and pretty much any armor mod that exists just to make your Berserk colonists a little bit more powerful and to make them last a little bit longer. So the kind of playthrough vibe that I'm going for here is that you take some slaves, you recruit them or do whatever you want with them, you give them a weapon and then you make them take drugs in the middle of combat and watch them go wild and then put them down at the end of it because they're only slaves, which is very RimWorld. Nice! This mod, despite the fact that it's not a big mod, does potentially allow you to explore a lot of unique gameplay opportunities, which is really impressive. But it's a not very big mod and it's not really one that you're going to be focusing on a lot of time. Kind of one of those mods that you just kind of chuck in and you work out it's there and it's like, oh great, this is cool. And then you don't really touch it. It needs a little bit more of development in terms of content to make this a mod that you can focus on a bit more. Because at this current moment in time, it's just kind of an an add-on that exists. So for mod recommendations, it fits with like every playthrough and it, you can put this in with like any other mods, but should you at the cost of blow and things, I'm not too sure. So for mod recommendations here, I'm gonna be giving it a eight out of 10. So now for my conclusion, where am I at with things? Well, as you can tell, I'm very impressed with this mod. I love the concept of it. And I think it's something that we just don't really have much of in RimWorld. And I think because it's totally unique, really in terms of concept, it actually fits in really well with RimWorld as well. Now there are a few downsides. The quality of it is, pretty trash i'm not gonna lie we could really see with just some new artwork put in here and it would make a huge difference to the way things look like in game and then obviously we only have one drug that's been added here i am desperate for some more here a little bit more of progression here some different variations of things things that give you more effects in different areas maybe we have one of these demon root pills that we mix with plasteel and it gives you like a ridiculous amount of armor for a very short amount of time maybe we mix it with chem fuel and it then makes you explode which is kind of exciting as well there's so many different ways that we could take this mod that makes it super interesting and maybe spin on it that the maru root is this amazing side casting l texy thing there's a lot of potential here that's not really been gone into very much, but I love the way that it's been provided here, and I love the whole concept of it. So for content, I gave it 7 out of 10, quality 4 out of 10, balancing 9 out of 10, compatibility 8 out of 10, mod recommendations 8 out of 10 as well, giving it the grand total score of 36 out of 50, which is an extremely solid B-rated mod. This mod, I highly recommend you to, guys to check out because it's so cool like the way it works is amazing it's a very interesting mod to just chuck in anywhere and just kind of see what happens i'll be very interesting to know here and i'm kind of talking to the developer here do raiders spawn in with this drug potentially is this something that we could get the re the wasters faction spawning in with and then have them take at the beginning because that would be a really cool thing that <laughs> that would be so funny Please let me know, if, Mr. Developer, if that is a thing. If you have enjoyed today's video and don't necessarily listen to all of my opinions, check this mod out for yourself and, and generate your own opinions. Consider liking, subscribing, 
and make sure you tell your mum about me. I'll see you next time. Thank you.